This video is one of those very insightful ones, one of those videos that will resonate with people who have a lot of self-awareness, who are curious, who are trying to go into depth to create a better relationship or a relationship they love being part of. When the two of you got together, there were certain things you both agreed to or thought about and certain ideas, ideas that you both had, that you both wanted, and each person brought those. But a lot of times as the relationship goes on, people get kind of crusty. They get kind of, you know, jaded. They begin believing they can't have the relationship that they really wanted. And while all those considerations are important in a group, in a couple's session or maybe a group therapy of some type for couples, it's important that you take it apart and you individually think about some of these things. And today what I would like you to think about is how you can become a better partner. A lot of times when things are going poorly in our relationship, we automatically want to blame our partner or we project onto them things they could change that would make us happier, right? You do it, I do it, it's part of being married. But when you are a person that has insight, emotional maturity, and you're really thinking, you know, there's things this relationship I just don't like, how can I do it better? This video is for you. And if it resonates with you, if you think it's helpful for you, if you start seeing yourself change with it, bringing up different discussions with your partner, then by all means, I really would like you to share it with your partner, with your friends, because this video is a wonderful teaching video, if you will. So the first of these is, what did your upbringing teach you about marriage? Now, a lot of people cop out and they say, well, my parents worked hard, they made a lot of sacrifices, and you know, marriage isn't always perfect, but you work together, blah, 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 blah. That's a cop out. What's important is that you can, you can actually go through and write down five to 10 things that growing up in your family of origin taught you about marriage. Because believe it or not, you may think, well, you know, I made different choices. My parents fought a lot. We don't do that. We sit down and discuss things at a quiet time when we, you know, we put it on our calendar, whatever. There are certain things very deep inside you that growing up in that family taught you. And it's important that you're aware of it. So it doesn't blindside you. Because even though you may have made different decisions with some of them, some of them are still in there and they will come shining through. And when, when you know about it, when you identify it, then you can actually go, that's why I always say that. Or that's why I always sabotage when my partner brings up this or this. And you can share that with your partner and they will be really impressed that you had that insight, that you really wanted to be a better partner and you were invested in listening to this video and starting some of the practices. Number two, why aren't you doing the things you, you think right now would make a difference in your relationship and make it better? A lot of times we're carrying old grief, old anger, old resentment, and we're not honest about it. We're just sweeping it under the rug. We say we resolved things with our partner, but we really didn't forgive them. And although I'd be the first to say, it's easy to say I forgive you, it's another thing to do the action of forgiveness, really moving on, really looking at every day as a new day. And what's important is not what you say, but what's inside you. What are you carrying? What are you thinking? And when you have an opportunity, and we all do, it's on my checklist of doing one kind, considerate thing for our partner each day, why do you hold back? Or why is that an area that's just not a priority? Are you punishing your partner? Is it your way of kind of a silent anger seething? It's important that you know what it is, that you can identify it so that when you talk to your partner, you can tell them, listen, I'm trying to be a better partner and I realize this is still unresolved. Can we work on this? And most of the time, your partner will acquiesce and be grateful that you brought it to the table. Number three, are you pretending to have forgiven or worked through a grievance that is still active, an active source of pain for you. 
Is there something inside you that is still an act of pain or something that your partner did? Did your partner betray you emotionally or physical in the past? Did your partner make fun of you for feeling something, something you said? They might have made fun of it or tried to lighten it with humor and it wasn't at all funny to you. Whatever it is, it's not important that other people know who is right or who is wrong. It's important that you know and that you can identify it and say, you know, I never got over that. I recall something that happened when I, when I was pregnant one time and I had a miscarriage. And at the time of the miscarriage, when I had to go to the doctor and they do something called a DNC, my husband had to do a surgery and he could not get out of the case or this is what he told me. But anyway, a friend took me to the hospital. He came later, but that really hurt me. And I had to work on forgiving him for that because I was scared and I was vulnerable. And it was a time I really needed him. It was our child. And although it wasn't viable, it wasn't a viable embryo, it still was very difficult for me. So it's these kinds of things when we're able to share them that we actually can get healed the way we need to and we can be a better partner. What is the elephant in the room when you think about your relationship? Maybe you're married to an addict. Maybe you're married to someone who is passive aggressive. Maybe you're married to someone who was traumatized or sexually abused. Whatever it is, it will taint other areas. And it becomes an elephant in the room. All of a sudden, in the case of if you had a partner who was traumatized sexually, you can never be really relaxed talking about sex. You have to always consider that things you say could hurt them. There's all sorts of things that come out of that. That would be an elephant in the room or something so sensitive to the two of you. You can't touch it. You can't communicate about it because it, it just explodes. These are elephants in the room. And as long as you both share what the elephant is and what it's doing to the relationship, that there's no sense of closure, intimate or emotional around the elephant, that's going to be a huge stepping stone. And now if you came into therapy with that issue, that would be something we could actually fix, resolve, and help you move through. But we cannot help you as readily if it's still an elephant both people are terrified to talk about. They're just looking around it because it's just like, don't go there, we're not gonna talk about that. And can you picture being with this partner for five, 10, 20 years? A lot of times the reason we don't become a better partner is because we honestly don't think we'll be with that person that long. So we kind of say, well, it's kind of a holding pattern. I don't want to stir anything up. We don't tell them that, honestly. We behave that way. And that's what causes us to step back, to not be a better partner for them. Because you understand when you're a better partner for them, you're a better person for you. And that is what makes a huge difference in having a healthy relationship that is committed to going into the future and you know, really supporting and loving each other.